Michael Phelps joins us now exclusively. Michael, good morning. We're so glad to see you. Good morning. You know, uh, I was just thinking when I watched this last night that we love to tell those Olympic stories. We love to tell the story of how someone rises up and has the spotlight. But this is an Olympic story we do not tell. But you are telling it in this documentary. Why did you want to? Um, because there are so many of us out there that, that really are struggling. Um, you know, I think it, it took five Olympics for me to really see it. And, and you know, what I think me being in the mental state that I was going into 2016 allowed me that opportunity to, um, I guess, be open to have the interactions that I had with the other athletes. And that led me to believe that there are others that, that are struggling and struggling very, very hard. Um, and and um, it was wild to see that I wasn't alone, um, but it also made me feel good because there were other people that could help me understand it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, you know, I, I, the, the, the documentary is called The Weight of Gold. And of course, that it's literally heavy, but the documentary is heavy. The stories that you tell are heavy. and. Can you explain this dynamic, why Olympic athletes in particular are so susceptible to these mental health struggles? Um, I, I think it's just the journey that we kind of go on. You know, I think, you know, as kids growing up, we see this thing of, of, of being an Olympian and winning Olympic gold medal. And, and we don't see the sort of the, the, the bumps that you I guess go through or could have as an Olympian. And, and, you know, I'll say, you know, over the last five years, I've really been able to open up and share my experiences. And, and I'm so thankful that, that we were able to have, you know, almost half a dozen or more athletes stand up next to us and, and, and talk about the same struggles. Um, it's, uh, it's so moving. It's, it's, uh, it shows that we can work together to make change. You know, you do have some elite athletes, household names, candid interviews, Apollo Ono, Lolo Jones, Sasha Cohen, Gracie Gold, Bodie Miller. Was it hard for you to get them to talk about this in such a candid way? Um, I mean, I think, it, like, as you heard uh, in, in the film, it's difficult to show vulnerability, you know, especially as an athlete. We, we can't show that weakness. And, and you know, I, I 100% have to say thank you to all the athletes who have stood up and, and who feel safe sharing their story. Um, you know, I, I can speak for myself. I know opening up and, and talking about the struggles that I've had um, has, has only helped me grow even more. Um, so hopefully we can see not only other athletes, but, but other human beings out there stepping up and, and supporting it. Everybody else who's going th through something like this. This film will break your heart. A lot of the athletes yeah. said that they considered suicide. You have said that you got to a place where you yourself committed, or excuse me, considered suicide. And there are athletes who were successful that you feature in the documentary. This is really serious. Um, it is, and and you'll see in the the documentary, it's it's very raw, um, and and uh, yeah, it it probably will uh, help you shed a tear, and and um, you know these are these are what we lived with, and and there are other people out there that that are going through this as well. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, it is going to be difficult, but you know it's something that we need to talk about, and we need to address, and. and um, as you said, the, a handful of others have, have lost their life, and, and this is something that I would like to try and change. I would like to try and save as many Olympians or as many lives as we possibly can. And this conversation, um, because, may, yeah, this conversation may be doing that. I, I think about what I learned in the documentary about that singular focus on the Olympics and everything building up to that moment. And then I think about those athletes who were waiting for Tokyo and the crushing disappointment they must feel. Are you concerned about that? Um, yeah, I mean, as, as I spoke earlier in the year, you know, it's, it's just so much uncertainty. And I think that's the scary part. Um, you know, you prep four years for it and then all of a sudden you kind of sit there and start twiddling your thumbs and don't know what to do. So, um, you know, I hope that all the athletes are, are trying to take care of what, taking care of what they can control. Um, and, and if they can do that, then hopefully they can set themselves up for, for some, uh, I guess the potential to have, uh, uh, a decent, competition next year if it happens um i hope it does just for the sake of the athletes and and 
um, for, for all of us. You know, I think it's always good to see the Olympics come around and, and the movement is so amazing. Well, you really have started an important conversation and I think your leadership, I mean, you are the greatest Olympian of all times and if you say it happened to me, then I think a lot of people will feel like they can talk too. I, I got to ask you, Michael, before I go, how has how, how has quarantine, how has the shutdown been with you? You got a house full of boys, three little ones. How's Nicole is what it's, I really uh, should ask. <laughs> yeah, it's, been, uh, it's been good. Um, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've been outside a bunch just playing in the yard, going swimming from, from time to time. The boys are, uh, keeping busy, um, a lot of sleeping, a lot of napping. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of been good for us. We're homebodies. So, um, it's, it's been enjoyable for me. I'm always on the road. So, you know, having the chance to, to spend some time with the boys and the family, um, has, has been a dream come true. So, you know, I feel like I've been able to grow through this pandemic and, and this quarantine. And, and, um, I think my wife and I have grown, uh, even more, you know, we've been able to go through, um, <clears throat> or she's, she's helped me through some of my personal struggles that I've had. And, and, um, you know, I think we've just been able to grow as a couple and it's been something that, that, truly has been incredible. Yeah. And Michael, I can see that like my husband, Michael, you've lost your razor. I like the, the, the stash. <laughs> Isn't the facial hair is looking good? Do the kids like it? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, they, they, they kind of <laughs> joke about it. They pull on it from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm familiar. Michael Phelps, thank you so much. Congratulations on the thank documentary. I know you poured your heart into it. It's called The Weight of Gold, and it airs tonight on HBO. We appreciate it. You know, it's, it thank was you. such an amazing Michael. conversation. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Michael Phelps, again, 28 mm -hmm. medals, mm -hmm. He could have slipped into the sunset, yeah. and he's yeah. devoted his life yes. to this particular cause and has done more good mm -hmm. than he probably realizes. Last mm -hmm. time he was here, he talked about an app that he's involved with called Talkspace, which mm -hmm. I've used. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's, it's one of these small things that has made a mm -hmm. big difference in a lot of people's lives. It's mm -hmm. not just athletes. I mean, the documentary, yes. you learn why this problem is unique to the experiences that they have, having poured their whole lives into one moment and then... Then what? Even if then you what? are successful. Yes. But I think that anybody will connect with um, the feeling of struggle and the call to action and the call to just be open and By talk. By the way, I wanted to see it. Now I'm dying to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a great interview. Yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Phelps. Uh -huh. uh,